YouTube, what is up? Uh, it's your boy Sean Mitra here with the updated tier list video. All right, so I'll put this down here. We're gonna discuss what is the tier list for the KC Cup. Now, I told you I'd be back with another tier list. Uh, we are at 959 subscribers, so if you could please, 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 please smash that subscribe button, like, comment. I would be greatly appreciated. Do that right now. Uh, so you get this rockin' tier list update, and so you can see awesome stage two streams. And, yeah. Anyway, moving on. Okay, so I'm not gonna even ignore the Super Pilot because I don't even know what this deck is referring to, so we're just gonna move on to whatever else. Alright, let's start out with S-Force, and unfortunately S-Force is a rogue deck. It's not top tier. The reason why is because Takion absolutely crabs on this deck. If you go second... And you get hit with, um, you know, your Omni to get on your Chiamaru. It's looking pretty sad, I would say. There's really no way to play around it, necessarily. And, yeah. I mean, you know, I, the thing is, like, a lot of their other techs, like IDP Crow, you really don't care about. It's probably, like, the Omni to gate that would hurt this deck the most, honestly. Um, it's kind of interesting if you go first. Because, like, if you go first, maybe you hit them with the Trap and Gravitino. And bat Like, it's funny because, like, you can banish all that crap. But the problem is the minute they force the Omni, it's kind of weird. Maybe it kind of goes into Tier 3. Maybe I still keep it at Tier 3. Uh, yeah, maybe we can keep it at Tier 3. I'm kind of, like, low-end Tier 3, like High Rogue. Kind of, like, somewhere in here. But, yeah, maybe we'll keep it at Tier 3. Yeah. Alright. Next is... Gearfried and Gearfried is Oh gosh, where do I put this without JBZ killing me? It's a tier three ish roguish deck. Um paired with other things, maybe low end to tier three, high end rogue. Uh Alright, so Gearfried is a really strong deck into a pilot that knows it. JBZ is the best pilot I've seen on it. Uh He's taught many, many many Quantum tournaments with it, and you can use basically any engine you want. One of the two ship engines I see people use. Light Twin Engine. I can actually do decent going second. So you know what? I will throw it into uh, the Tier 3 category. Uh, more or less so JBZ doesn't uh, fry me at the end of this video, but yeah. Uh, I definitely think it's definitely a Tier 3 contender for sure. Like It's a, it's a solid deck to a pilot who really knows it. Uh, like Somewhere on the Tier 3 Rogue range, but yeah. To one who knows it, yeah, definitely really good. Okay, um, in that department, because you force up in the gate, uh, you know, given that you open up, you know, gear freed, or you can use your Sioux ships to extend going second or whatever engine you're going to play with it. Even an amazement engine could be something you could do. Yeah, so definitely in that tier three category. All right, Medolce. <laughs> oh, I don't want to do this, but <laughs> it might be our first deck that makes it here. <laughs> I know Sabine is going to fry me for this, but it, it somewhere in the cog memes are too much waste. <laughs> this deck is not good. It, it just doesn't really, you know, accomplish anything right now, to be honest with you. I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess technically turn one, you could make, uh, you could make, you could go against Shira if you go first and then bounce the spectral back of the deck and be funny. Uh, with teacher, but like, I mean, what are you doing against Takion if you get Omni negated? I don't know. I mean, I guess you can run like text to uh, stop it and then hope you draw into those text. But then, like, your turn one board is not really doing anything against them either without you drawing any text. I mean, I guess you become unaffected by monster effects, I guess. Can they kill you through that? Maybe? Because, like, you're lingering. They can't. Alright, I'll put it in cog memes. Maybe I'll put it in cog memes. Maybe this is a bit harsh. Uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and throw it in cog memes. We'll throw it in cog memes. Uh, maybe, maybe Sue's voice is a bit harsh. But, yeah. Uh, uh, but, yeah, it, it's definitely a cog meme for sure, you know. Uh, it's not top. It's not rogue. It's not top tier. But, yeah. Probably cog meme. Sewage waste is a little bit harsh. Even for even for some of my distaste of what the deck does in Duel Links or what it aims to do. But yeah, yeah, Cogmeme seems about right. 
Alright. Speed Roids, Rogue. Uh, top tier MasterCard Sands. Uh, definitely, but... Uh, this deck can definitely end on clear crystal turbo. It can still put up a really good turbo board. Turn two, the deck can actually get through some disruption. I'll be you have your lance, your cosmics, your whatever, your chalices, books, whatever you want to run. Things that can help you go in second. Uh, it's a pretty good deck into a pilot who really knows how to play it well. So, yeah, I will put this deck at rogue tier, high rogue tier potentially. But yeah, uh, I I wanted to. But disclose something here, and this is very important. The tier zero and tier one decks that I have up here, there's a, a huge gap between like the tier three rogue decks and the tier three tier twos, and well, more like the tier one tier zeros to the tier threes in this meta, like a huge gap. Uh, so I just want to disclose that. Like you can do well with these decks, but it takes a lot of skill and it's gonna take some patience. Because there, you will probably have to play a decent amount of games on the tier three decks, or just be really good at piloting them in general. So just keep that in mind. Uh, Orcist is a cog meme. Pure Orcist. Um, it's not good. It's not even like rogue in my opinion because the only way this deck wins is by going first. And if you go second and they have IDP and they have, um, you know, if they if they if they have, like, IDP and they have, like, uh, Omni Negate, it's probably not looking good for you, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, you know, so at that point, you know, Pure Orcus becomes a meme at that point. Uh, you know, not top tier, not even Rogue at this point, but, you know, it, 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 it's kind of close to Rogue, but it's like, I don't know. I don't feel like it's even Rogue at this point. It just struggles too much, in my opinion, to really do anything you know, uh, viable to Takion. Like, if Takion's not in the meta, some of these decks just get a huge buff up, but, like, I don't know. Yeah. All right. The Synchron <laughs> is Sewage Waste. Yes. Pure Synchron is not a good deck. It is, it is, I don't even know if it's Cogmium at this point, because pretty much if it goes second into anything, it's probably going to lose. Um, even throwing Mech Knights into it, it's still kind of risky. You still lose your main play. And I think overall the deck just doesn't really do anything. Uh, overall, I know in the last tier list I put it at Rogue, but like, ever since the meta kind of got power crept, it's kind of like, you know... <laughs> you know, it's not in the really best spot right now, but maybe maybe I get so destroyed and somebody does so well on this. I don't know, but I don't think anybody's going to be playing this in the KC Cup at all. You know? Um, you know, yeah. Dark Magician is probably who, with the new successor, Soul Dark Magician. Um, uh, god dang it. Um, damn. Uh, whew. Uh, probably a cog meme. I, I, I want to throw it in Rogue. Maybe I will. Let's see, really, anyone play the deck? Enough. Maybe it is a rogue deck. I don't know. Maybe. But, like, highest than the cog memes, maybe lowest than a rogue. Other than that, like, the deck doesn't really do much. It's not really, you know... I mean, it does more. It does more. Cause it's better It's better than it was. It's like, it's got a huge buff because you have successor still now and you have, you know, uh, the uh, Magical Ice Fusion does more and then you have the traps that do more. I want to play this deck a lot more. I want to play this because I think there's more potential here, but... Maybe, like, the high as the economy is. I think, like you said, like, if you didn't have something like Taki on the meta, this could actually be a decent rogue deck, believe it or not. Because I think it could actually do well, or a high-end rogue deck, believe it or not. But, you know, it's kind of hard to judge when you have, like, uh, one of the most broken decks we've ever seen in a while in the meta. Uh, Goki is Sewage Waste. Yes, this deck is not even a cog meme at this point. They summon Suprex, you go to interrupt them with the Omni Negate, and it doesn't even go to the graveyard, which is even worse for them. It goes back in the deck, so they won't even get a search. Uh, so at that point, then, yeah, they pretty much lose, and it, it's game over for Goki. And no matter how much backward removal you run, you still can't deal with the Omni Enhance. So you have to hope to open a book, or you're probably losing the game. So yes, for that reason and that reason only, Goki is in the sewage waste category. <laughs> this deck is not good. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not there, you know. All right. Uh, Water Exceed is 
A cog meme. Yeah, it's probably good enough to be a cog meme. Uh, like I said, if it it, it it can win games if it draws the right hand. If you go first with the right hand, yeah, this can win the game. Uh, if you go up against Shira and you end on Dweller turn one with like two pops because you have a Krokko and maybe another disruption, then sure, you can win. But if you're not doing that, you're probably not winning. And going second, it's going to be tough. Not only that, like, this deck is insanely big brain to any player who plays it. Like, you have to be really smart in this deck, knowing exactly how you're going to extend your board. Uh, right now, like, this deck is just not good. It's not even broke. It, it's a cog meme, but it's not, it's not, it's not bad enough to be sewage waste. Okay. Anais Orcus is dead, hence it's sewage waste. It, it's not, this is pure Anais. Well, uh, do I have an Anais Orcus one here, too? I feel like I do. Yeah. So we'll just go ahead and throw them both in sewage waste while we're here. Yeah, Anna, how the mighty have fallen. Anna's went from being one of the best decks, or the best deck, to being a deck that is no longer even viable to play. Yeah, so they hit Raging Pendulum and then went Anna's and is not even a played deck anymore. So with that being said, they both go into sewage waste. There's really not much talking about it, but, you know, it is what it is. All right, Raid Raptor. <laughs> God. I feel like if I'm going to put Goki here, I kind of... Well, I think Ray Raptor have a significantly better turn one, so it'll be a cog meme. Ray Raptor is one of those decks where you kind of, again, like Goki, in order to do anything, you have to go first. But I feel like Ray Raptor actually have a turn, better turn than Goki do. They pretty much end on Nightmare before it's, you know, maybe even making up, ranking up into Odd Eyes Raging Dragon on the opponent's turn if they really want to. But, you know, overall... Cog meme, if you go first with it, yeah, you're going to win. But if you go second and they omni negate your uh, Strangle Lanius, or whatever the heck it's called, uh, Tribute Lanius, then I feel bad for you and it's time to probably cry. And, you know, <laughs> we move on with our lives. But, yeah, that's pretty much how that goes. And also, you're very vulnerable to IDP because everything's a winged beast in the deck. So, there's that. Okay. Onomat is... I mean, if we're counting the zombie version, maybe high-end cog meme, low-end rogue, yeah, highest-end cog meme, maybe. Because the thing is, is like, the problem is, you're coping if Kuro isn't going to be all over the cup. And if you don't have a follow-up plan through DD Crow, your deck is probably going to struggle. I, I don't know. Maybe this deck's a rogue deck. Like, if it gets its combo up, maybe it wins. I don't know. Maybe, like, the zombie version could do something, but I don't have a lot of confidence in it at this point, but maybe. And this is being generous. Like, lowest end of rogue. Uh, Chronomaly is a cog meme. Uh, it, it, again, like a deck that could do decent, okay-ish going second, it's not great. You, you open up, um, Crystal Bones or have, like, multiple Moais, maybe you can do something. But you have to have, like, it, it's still really bad because, like, if you die to an Omni Negate, then you're pretty much dead in the water. Like, if they negate Nebra, then you really, like, you know, sometimes can't even get your plays going and it just ends on an ug ugly fest. You know, it's just severely out power crept at this point and when i say cog means i mean like legend cog means things that you could like all these decks that i'm putting up here are cogable like in the cog meme section yeah some of these decks down below are not even cogable anymore i don't know i think goki still is probably cogable sigron you probably can cog with but like well, i don't know some of these decks like honest dead so maybe it's still cogable i don't know but like you know some of these i don't even know i question whether they're even cogable uh, uh but or cogable with like a ton of work or maybe like late season cog or something like that. I mean like cogging in a well-defined meta. That's what I mean. Okay. Not like whatever somebody means people bring across or like garbage decks that these decks would just trounce. Uh, all right. Trickstar is a cog meme. Yeah. This deck's not even meta anymore. And like, I mean, like it's not even meta and it's, and, and it's fallen. Like the thing is like everything in the meta just, really outpower creeps trickstar like you could crow them i mean i guess against Shira, like if you draw the crow maybe you're gonna win the game but like 
The problem is, like, once Shira gets going, if you don't draw the Crow, you're pretty much not going to outface them. I, granted, you do have cards like IDP that can help you win, but again, you're just in a losing battle there. Like, if they get going, then you're you're severely outpaced. So, like, drawing an IDP in game is not going to help you because they're going to way outpace you. If you go up against Takion, then the deck is just like you, you summon Candide and they omni to get you, then what? Then you better hope you have Festival in hand, because otherwise you're probably not playing the game. Or if they don't negate Candino and they just negate Festival, you're probably also not playing the game. Uh, so, you know, I, I don't know if you really want to take that risk. Maybe it's a rogue deck. I don't know. I think I still think it's like a cog meme, but uh, maybe it's like a low end rogue. I don't want to be that mean to Trickstar. Maybe I'll put it as like a low end rogue deck, you know? I don't know if we've gotten this bad yet. But the fact that I'm thinking about putting it in cog memes is kind of scary how considerable I think it's fallen. But yeah, maybe a very low end rogue deck. I don't think a lot of people are going to play Trickstar. Maybe you'll get like one or two people playing it, but like other than that, yeah. Alright. Uh, Code Talker, pure Code Talker is like sewage waste. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's it's fallen. We fall in chat in the sewage waste. Yeah. Uh, Firewall plus Recoded Alive and maybe a backdoor is not good enough anymore because there's just so many decks that just play through it now. Uh, reality is like Shira and other decks can force you. They have a lot of turns to poo cards and whatnot. And going turn one, the deck is not going to play through whatever these decks put up. It's just reality of it. Um, and like I said, getting Omni to get it on a starter is pretty rough. So, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Rocket. Now, I consider this a high rogue deck. I don't think Rocket is top tier. I don't. And I'm going to be... I'm firm on this last tier list. I was like, okay, with the Constellers and the meta, blah, 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 blah. Okay, maybe, maybe. But I, I really don't think Rocket is top tier. I think it's a rogue deck. I think it's a high rogue deck. I still think it's a decent deck. It's kind of strong, but it's it, it's kind of decent. Like, no, not kind of decent. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty solid. Like, it's pretty strong. But the problem is, is that in a meta where it's like Tachyon is the main focus, this deck is just not going to do well. It's the bottom line. It's because if you get Omni on a starter, it could be rough. Like, then suddenly you have to open up a really good hand going second to do anything with Rocket. And Rocket is not the kind of deck that OTKs you, generally. So it, 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 the problem is once they negate it, like, first of all, if you don't even open up Tracer, then it's going to be really rough because then they can negate BSL and then you're kind of in a really bad spot already. Uh, and if they negate your Tracer, then what are you going to do? Then you really can't really extend and do a bunch of other plays that you really want to do, right? And if you're not killing them, then Takion has a really strong follow-up. And again, with Shira Nui, the problem with Rocket against Shira is like, if Shira goes first, they... they Rocket, I'm not convinced, can break that board easily at all. Like, if Shira opens up a good hand and goes first, Rocket is going to be severely outpaced because they're going to spam so many synchros. Like, Sunslung is not the easiest thing for Rocket to out. Like, they have to use, like, Booster Dragon or go into, like, Magna Rocket and do lines like that to out it because it can't be destroyed by card effects, so it makes it... Or use Borlo Dragon. Like, one of those cards has to be the out. And the problem is, it's not like Shira makes that one body and that's it, right? Like, they could spam it. And once you are able to spam big bodies and, you know, then it's going to become, or get multiple times Sun Saga on the field, it's going to be very hard for Rocket to play. And going second into Shira is going to be very tough for them. Like, I think them going second into Shira is potentially even harder for them going second into Constellar, which I already thought was a bad matchup for them, but... You're already in a downplaying position. You know, their turn one, like I said, is good. Their turn two is decent. Like, they have a shot going second. Like, in the live twin, they can go second very well. That's why in that meta, I thought they were, like, tier two. But I think that in this case, with Takion being the focus and Shira being the focus, I just think the deck dips down to a high rogue. I think it loses some of its power. Uh, I think that other decks, even like S-Force and Gear Free, have slightly a better shot. Maybe S-Force has got to be rogue too. It's like on the fritz for me, but they just have a better shot. And I feel like as a deck, you have to be able to play going second because if you're not, then you're kind of falling behind already in the eight ball. And while I think Rocket has a shot at going second, it's not consistent in doing so. And because of that, I'm throwing it in the highest rogue tier. 
I think Rocket is not a top tier at the moment. Now, granted, if they hit Hockey on some of these other decks, yes, it will bump back up. But right now, I don't see it there. All right, Self Accord. <laughs> Gosh, uh, it is a Cogmean. It, it's not awful. It's not sewage waste, all right? We haven't hit that point yet. But the thing is, Self Accord is a deck that, I mean, with the right text going turn one, it might do fine. Like, the thing is, like, you can run things like Chaos Hunter if you really want to be a pain in the ass, or, like, the end of and then shut down your opponent's ability to really banish things or use the graveyard uh, so you can annoy Shira. But reality is, like, this deck is, like, probably the lowest end of Cog memes because it, going second is not going to be kind to you, and if they activate if they activate Cutia and you get Omni negated, well, <laughs> like, once again, rest in peace, all oh, oh, in your pretty much dead in the water so yeah because of that we've hit cog memes almost sewage waste but because i like the deck it's not gonna go to sewage waste just quite yet all right pk is another cog meme it, it, it's a high-end cog meme but it is uh a cog meme nonetheless it probably switch this around a bit put orcas out ahead maybe the amount ahead of it uh but uh you know, PK is just not a good deck right now. It doesn't really do anything special that any other deck cannot do. Like, it could go second to a point, which I like, but it's not going second enough to stop these decks, right? And Omni Gate is going to hurt you a lot. Not only that, it goes back into the deck, which also sucks if you're trying to negate, trying to pop something with Break Sword, right? You want Break Sword in the graveyard. If you're not getting it in the graveyard, you're probably losing. And also, IDP stonks really hard against Phantom Knight, so you're probably already uh, losing a battle going second anyway. So, because of that, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and um, leave this where it is. Alright. Um, Resonator is Sewage Wave! Uh, yeah, we probably hit the highest end of sewage waste. Uh, it's almost a cog meme. It's almost a cog meme. We're almost a cog meme. Maybe I'll put it in the cog memes. We'll see. But, you know, the, the reality is, is unless you're going first, you're probably losing the game. And the reason why is the minute they omni negate your uh, starter, well, rest in peace, shake my hand, oh, 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 oh. And again, IDP stonks really hard, so even if you manage to draw a Book of Moon, you, they go into Coach King, you get IDP'd, and it's probably game over, rip over. At the same time, this deck can actually do something against Shira, so maybe we'll put it into lowest end of Cog memes. But, like, against Shira Nui, maybe you could, like, okay, activate your Skullmeister and stop Spectral. Okay. Other than that, well, you know, it is what it is. Uh, going first, you could win. Just go first, that's all. Just go, keep going first. Alright, DDD is <laughs> sewage waste. I'm sorry, Space. I love you, bro, but it, it's not good. It's like, it's like Takion's baby brother. <laughs> it's like Takion does everything that this deck hopes to do, but DDD just like doesn't do. You know what I mean? Like, DDD can make some really crazy cool boards going second, which I love. But the problem is, going first, Takia just makes Coach King 10 times better and makes rank 8 10 times faster. So because of that, you know, it just doesn't, you know, DDD just kind of like, you know, sits down on the couch a bit and cries. So yeah, it's, it's kind of sewage waste right now. But it is out of, of two band decks. It probably added this. So, you know, there you go. Um... Uh, Earth Machine is tier 3. It, it, it's taken a tumble down, I think, a little bit. I think it's, like, at the highest end of tier 3, though. Like, in any... The problem is, the meta is really, really faltered for them. Like, it was a good meta because they can go second at the Consto, they can go second at the Live Twin, without an issue. The problem is, going second into Shiranui is a different story. Because Shiranui ends on a 3,500 Chungus that says, I can't be destroyed. And the problem with that is, is that that becomes vastly difficult to deal with. More difficult for them to deal with. Um, especially if you're getting interrupted at multiple points. And you can't kill them because they have the trap card. 
So it's when they open up Samsara, you are not unable to kill them, which kind of takes away from what Earth Machine wants to do. Because of that, the deck has fallen quite considerably from my tier one spot. Uh, also, Omni Negate, you can play around it. There are ways for Earth Machine to play around Omni, but there are some ants that you can't play around the Omni. But if you have to deal with an Omni and IDP, I think that's going to be very stress stressful for Earth Machine. Like, if you have to deal with the Omni plus IDP, that's going to be a lot. You know, because, like, then at that point, then you're probably, like, running on resources unless you open up the perfect hand. You know, so at that point, like, I think it's dropped to Tier 3, and I would even argue maybe even be high enough for for now. You know, if they hit some of these decks, then it will definitely fly back up to Tier list, but right now, it's it's just not there. Uh, Constellar is Tier 3. You know, like I said, maybe back end of Tier 3, maybe high in Rogue. Like, it's right there with Rocket, you know. It, it's kind of like Falter for me, because... Again, this deck just, just you know, it has to go first. It You have to go first. Like, it's insanely strong going first. And maybe if you have Lucky and you open up the hand trap you need, you know, you can go second. I would even argue it's back in the Rogue spot. Yeah. Probably behind Rocket. Because the thing is, is like, going second for it, 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 it it's tough. Yeah. Like, if you go second, you're really struggling with this deck. And with the boards that, like, Shira can put up, like, Shira Nui can go, you people go, oh, yeah, but you're losing out with Shira going first. Shira Nui can do a lot better than Constell going second. And I can be lightly honest with that because you already have an extender in the graveyard. See, that's the thing. Before you even get to any of your techs, you already have the extender. Constella don't have the extender immediately. They have to draw it, and then they have to draw their tech cards to go second. If they, Shira Nui already starts with the extender, which gives them the ability to break boards. And you can break boards like Takya, and it is possible. So, like, Shira Nui is much better than they are. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm sorry, Takya, Blades. I'm sorry. I know you want this deck to be tiered, but it's just not in my mind. All right, next is Yubel. Yubel is a rogue deck. It is not top tier anymore because I don't think it really does anything great. I mean, I. <sighs> The problem is, like, if you go up against Shiranui and they activate Samsara, then what are you doing? You know, like, the whole gimmick of Yubel is kind of taken away, and you can't damage them. And it's only a limited amount of time at that point before they go into the Mayakashi link, shut you down, and then kill you with a Shogun Saga. Right? If they play in the Mayakashi link. If they're not playing the link, then they're probably going to beat you with some tech card that they do have in the deck. Or they probably play Unicorn, which Unicorn will also help beat Yubel as well. Uh, maybe tier 3, but, like, right now I see this more of a rogue deck, a high-end rogue deck, right up there with Rocket. Like I said, I just think it's, like, kind of falling flat on its face in the meta, and I just don't think it's that great. You know, I think it's okay-ish. Maybe tier 3. But, like, tier 3 and rogue are so close together at this point. So, like, you could argue one versus the other. Uh, Destiny Arrow is also a rogue deck. Again, like... This is another high-end rogue deck, and I'm going to tell you why. Because Zombie World variants and Beatrice variants can go first, and they can do a quite a bit, bit amount of things, and they can do... It's it's way, it's way behind Rocket and Constella, though. Yeah. Uh, I would argue that, like, Speedroid even jumps ahead of, like, all these decks here. Maybe even ahead of Rocket, like, somewhere here. Yeah, uh, maybe here. We'll do this. Uh, but, yeah, like... Yeah, that's where D era is at this point. It's the mid-range rogue deck at this point, but uh, we'll see. But it, it has a shot to get higher. I think it could get even higher at some point, but I don't think it's fair for me to put it above these decks uh, in the meta. Mayakashi is top tier. It's still tier 3. I think it's higher than any one of these decks at this point because I think Mayakashi has the advantage of being able to... Uh, you know, set up a decent turn one board that some decks, even in the meta, would have a hard time cracking. Uh, so at this point, I still think it, Maya can run a decent amount of decks going second because they have a lot of room. I think Maya is the best tier three deck at the moment. Uh, I don't think it's tier two anymore. I think that Shiranui is pretty much jumped ahead of it. You know what I'm? You know what I mean? Like maybe maybe it's tier two. Maybe this is tier two. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think Shiranui has kind of jumped ahead of it at this point. But, you know, I, I, I like, it, but the problem is, like I said, with my, it's still really, it's questionable. Going. I would say it's impossible to go second, but it's like kind of 
questionable to go second, if it makes sense. It, it, it depends on kind of what the hand is, you know, but it can go second effectively uh, in some cases. Okay, anyway. Gunkin is rogue. It, it really rogue. Uh, really rogue to the point that pure might just be a cog meme. Uh, it, it's not good in this current meta. It could go second. It, like, you could go second with this deck. Maybe maybe it's like a, a lower rogue deck. Uh, but, like, going first, I don't know what you're trying to accomplish too much. Like, I mean, I guess you could add a Dweller against Shira, but, like, maybe make a Mimana, but then you need the right hand, and then you need to draw tags, and there's a lot that needs to go right for the deck to work. So, because of that, yeah, it's where it is. Altergeist! All right, my boy Crimson's deck. Uh, it is somewhere in here, probably had a D hero or just can't find it. It's a it's a rogue deck. Uh, unfortunately, again, like I said, if you like a really good alter guys player can do it really well. Like Crimson's the god of them. Like uh, Giorfio, Crimson Reaper, and Giorfio, like two of the best I've seen. Uh, but the thing is, like, um, if you go second and you get Omni negated on multi figure, it, it could get bad depending on where. You are in the game. I, I, I rather, I, Crimson, please comment on this because you know this deck better than I do. So you know what this deck can play around more than I do. So just, uh, but in my personal opinion, I think it's like a mid range rogue deck in comparison to everything else. Uh, Shiva, you could actually start bouncing things back. But again, like I said, if you go first and they blow out your back row, if you go second to them and they blow out the back row, then it could get very bad fast. So, you know, because of that, I think that's where it stands. Cosmo is a cog meme. It's not even rogue anymore. It's like the problem is, is that it, it's that like it does nothing to shit. Like I don't think Cosmo does a good job at adding Sun Saga at all. Like the problem is, once you get Sun Saga, it might just be the FDK for Cosmo because unless they have Cosmo or like some IDP, they're not outing it. And if they bring it back, then it's like uh oh, you know, you know that's the problem. Like nothing in your deck actually outs a Sun Saga, which is kind of scary. So. You know, because of that and because of hello, Omni Negate goes second, and if my starter gets stopped, I lose. You know, that's also a bad thing against Takion as well. So I I'm going to put it like a cog meme for now. I don't think it's top tier anymore. It's just what it is. Tenyi is probably the highest end of tier two. Uh, Tenyi is a really, really still strong deck. I think it could deal well into Takion. I still think, like, you know, there are boards that it won't be able to crack. Like, if you have... The thing is, like, it can do decently well in the Takion, but I think, like, the thing is, like, if you have IDP and, like, an Omni, then it's probably not looking great unless you have, like, a really good hand. You know, it, it really depends how Takion opens, but, you know, eh, you know, you, you kind of have to see. But I think, like I said, Tenny out of a lot of decks has the best chance of going second and doing well. You know, so with that being said, I'd still put it close to, like, Tier 2. Uh, at that point. It's not tier 1, but it's like tier 2 at this point, uh, I think, in my mind. Uh, this Ancient Warrior uh, is probably somewhere down here with the Sioux ships. Uh, Trickstar is probably even behind this at this point. Uh, the thing is, is that Ancient Warrior, again, is a deck that does well going first. If you get Omni to get it going second, I feel bad for you. You're probably losing the game. <laughs> Uh, it, it has room for text, but not, like, a load of text, but, like, a decent amount of tech cards. You know, it's okay. I think it's fine, but it's not really great. I know, like, turn one, you could end on, like, Zong Wong, uh, Zong Kong, plus Double Dragon Lords and the Trap, and maybe another tech if you get really lucky, but, like, that's great. Like, your turn one's great. And then the turn two, you can make yourself untargetable, but the problem is... With, like, I think it's uh, whatever, the Liu Kang or whatever, the 29... No, that's Mortal Kombat. Whatever the 2800 is, that, that makes them untargetable. But the problem is that Sun Saga says, I don't care, I don't target. You know what I mean? That's the problem with that. And then they pop your you know, Sun Mo, and then you end up losing the game anyway. So, you know, at that point, like, it's... Rogue at best. Like, mid-rogue. God, it, it jumps ahead of Automat, honestly. But, like, there's a lot of decks that just jump ahead of <laughs> But, yeah. Uh, Magic Key is, uh, Rogue. <laughs> Somewhere in here. It's like, it's a, again, a really good going first. Going second, it depends on the hand you have. But, like, going first, you can end on, like, Draco Berserker plus, uh, Transfula Mine and your Negate. Or Void Ogre, whatever you want. 
void Draco Berserker plus Dress. Who am I to negate? But the problem is, is that's that while that may be sort of consistent, it's still going to struggle inconsistently going second. So at that point, it's a rogue deck. Not reliable, but it's kind of like Takyan, but you can't go second as well consistently. Like inconsistent Takyan almost. Amazement is. <laughs> It's a gog meme. It's not good at this point. Um, you know, it just doesn't do anything really. Uh, you know, yeah. Uh, eh. Well, pure amazement. If we're talking about pure amazement, it's so much waste. <laughs> it really is. Like, amazement live to it is kind of like a cog meme or like a rogue deck, but like this. Oh, did I forget to add live twin to this? Oh, I did. Okay. I do have to put live twin here. I should have one. Give me one second. I just thought about it and like, as I was making this, I thought about uh, live twin. I also gotta add a few more decks, to the, one more, two more decks to this list. Uh, but you know, uh, again, going back to that suggestion before, yeah, it, it's just not, you know, it, it's not good. <laughs> it's it's probably pure amazement. It's probably in the sewage waste department. Okay. Evil Swarm, um, is a cog meme. Now, if you go first against Takyon and you make Ophion, I am proud of you. Then you probably win the game. However, if you don't do that, you probably lose the game. So, you have a 50-50 shot of it actually working out for you, but probably even a higher than cog meme, because you do have a shot of going first and actually doing something productive, so... Yeah, at that point, you're probably right there with the Resonators and everybody else who has somewhat of a turn one that can argue to beat something else in the game. Other than that, you know, it's kind of like where it is right now, and it is what it is. But yeah, Ursartic. All right, now we're really getting into the questionable decks. Is probably a cog meme. Uh, yeah, this deck is still like, you know, can win games as a cog meme. And if you draw seven, then hell, hooray for you. And you do have a somewhat of a shot, but like, you know, maybe making like, I don't know, uh, you know, maybe going into Kite Drake, going second, you have a shot to win, but other than that, eh, it is what it is, but, you know, Quantum is actually, I know people are going to get mad when I put this here, but it's a rogue deck. It's actually, for people who know how to play this, it's actually a really decent rogue deck because like. The turn one, you can cyber slock your opponent. This deck will nail Sheer into the ground if it goes first. Going second is, you, you know, it's playable. It actually can deal well through some disruption going second if you know how to pilot this deck. Well, I'm probably going to throw this behind here. Uh, but it, it's a fun deck. It's not top tier. I wouldn't trust it at KC Cup, but... If you want to have some fun and you want it, you and you get lucky, you can do decently well with this. So, you know, it's definitely there. Like turn one, you end on Honey Bot plus your uh, widget. Not your widget kid. Your uh, oh, what is it they called? Uh, whatever the link to is, and then you end on your Quantum Dragon. So yeah, uh, so yeah, that that is what you would do, and then you become intargetable and undestructible. Cyrus Quantum. Really, really fun deck. Really cool. Um, yeah. Uh, Doom, Doom King Baldurok is... Is... Uh, yeah, is uh, Baldurok by itself. Pure Zombie World is Rogue. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would probably put it out of this. Uh, it's a Rogue deck. It has definitely potential to do something. Like, if you go... You can decently go second, and if going first, you end on Baldurok, you can... Disrupt your opponent, banish their monster with Zombie World. But the problem is, like, the minute you get disrupted by attack, it's like, uh oh, you know, or get crowed, it gets sketchy. So, you know, at that point, I would probably leave it there. So, yeah. Next, I have um, uh, Galaxy. Now, Galaxy is high end rogue. Okay, I'm going to put it up here with the rocket because there were some nasty boards that you can make turn one that are actually pretty, really, like, really good. Like, they can end on, like, Felgrand, your rank 4, and a link 2, which can pop, which is actually pretty solid. And going second, you can play through some disruption. 
So like because of that, I'm putting it up here at the top, top end of the row. And this is this is people are gonna say, is this in any particular order? Yes, this is in a particular order. They're not all grouped together. They're all like in a particular order of what I really feel is like the highest of rogue decks. I'd probably throw a rocket a little bit ahead of it, but right here. Definitely like up there with the speed roy, the rocket, and all the top is rogue decks. Uh Shiranui. This is a tier one deck. This is a very, very powerful deck. It is almost up here, but it's like really up here. Uh, Shira is like one of the top tier two decks right now. And it's really good almost here with Takion in a really good pile of sand. Uh, so Shira is like, in my opinion, one of the most fun decks to play. I know some people won't agree with me, but because it takes a lot of big brain power. Like, I'm going to tell you this right now. If you're, like, a uh, mid-brain player on this, then it's, like, here. But if you're a really good... If you're a good player, it's here. But if you're a really big brain player, you can get it up here. Like, I think this is one of the decks that can win the KC Cup. That's how strong this deck is. Uh, because... Uh, you can you could play through a good amount of disruption depending on how you build your deck. Uh, at the same time, you can also uh, end up breaking, uh, making a really good turn one board with some disruption on it, and it can make some crazy boards against like Tachyon and some other decks as well uh, that can auto win the game in that department. So yeah, it's really good. It's good turn two, and it has a good turn one against the best deck in the meta. It has a shot at winning turn two, and it has a good turn one. So that being said, I think it's that one of the elite decks up there right now. Tachyon is tier zero. <laughs> I mean, I'm not even going to discuss this. It is what it is. This deck kind of pushes every other meta deck that was kind of like in the tier three-ish range or maybe the tier two-ish range, almost down to rope. And that's how crazy this deck is. Like, you end on, you can end on four disruptions turn one easily, like double book, IDP, and a negate, which is really difficult for the opponent to deal with, while also having the follow-up. And this deck just puts out so many big bodies that it's relentless and it's so easy to play. Like, when I cog with this, I cog with this bird brainless. Like, I'm telling you, like, it, it, it is the best deck of the format <laughs> for a reason. Yeah. All right. Uh, Successor Soul Blue Eyes is a rogue deck, probably right around here. Uh, you know, it, it, it ends on Ultimate Fusion, which is actually kind of cool. Because, like, you could shuffle it to Blue Eyes, like, pop two cards and then make your fusion. And with some other back row, you can even play it with the original Blue Eyes skill, the uh, Blue Eyes Dimension as well. You don't have to play with the other one. But it, it's really, really a cool deck, and I think it can fit right in the rogue spot. Uh, Salaman Great is like... Ooh, I don't even know if it's rogue in this meta. Uh, it's probably rogue, yeah. It's definitely probably better than Gunkin and Trickstar. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely better than a handful of these decks. Yeah, it, 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 it's up here. Uh, I Maybe I'm a little bit too low. Yeah, I think I'm a little bit too low. Maybe I'm a little slow. I'm too low. Uh, it's here. Yeah, it, 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 it's definitely like a decent deck, but the problem is, is like Salad really does struggle against, I don't know, like... It, it, uh, like, Shira going second is probably going to be really rough for them because, like, they can't really deal with all those monsters. Like, they're not going to deal with... It. That Salad's not the kind of deck that just deals with so many big meters on the field. Like, the minute you start spamming them, and then you activate the trap, and then they can't OTK you, then it's, like, bad. Like, that, the deck is designed to OTK you. It's not this, like, the skill flea OTK. It's not designed to sit there and wait an eternity to play the game and out 10,000 big beaters in the game. That's the problem. Like, against Shira, I think, would be its toughest matchup going second. If it goes first, you can make Dweller and say, ha, ha, ha. But, like, it's to some extent. But if you go second, it's like, I don't know. Yeah, you know, I don't know how reliable, like, you're going second. It's not really looking great. And going second to the Tachyon, you do have Dark Hole, which is good. You do have outs to beat them. I think it can beat Tachyon going second. But, like, going first, eh, I don't know. It's kind of weird. It, it. And if you don't open up circle consistently, I feel like you're going to fall behind. So because of that, I think it's in a rogue spot. Light Twin is also rogue. Hello, Light Twin. It is not top tier. It is not. Not anymore. Because it, it, it just doesn't do anything. Like, every other deck, like, Light Twin's gimmick, I would even argue, like, it's even fallen even further than this. Like, here. Like, I know this is like, people are going to go, what? 
But the, the reality is, is like, the problem is, is that like every other deck, like Live Twin's gimmick is to go first. That's it. Like, you're not going first with Live Twin and trying to set up like three or four disruptions, then there's no point in playing the deck. If, but the problem is, if I look at so many other decks in this in the metagame right now, they just do what Live Twin does better, right? Like, uh, I, maybe like it goes here, maybe. Just like you can flip flop between this back and forth, but. But the thing is, like, look at all these decks in the matter. Right? Takyan. Takyan, turn one, turn two is really good. Shira's turn one, turn two is good. Arguably even better than that of Live Twin. And then you have Maya, which could go turn one and turn two. Live Twin cannot go turn one, turn two. It's rogue. It is. It's a rogue deck right now. It, it is what it is. It's, it's not unplayable. It's perfectly playable. But... I don't think it's in the category of being one of the best decks at the moment. Okay, so that is my snapshot of the meta. This is what I think you should expect in the KC Cup. I'm also going to have another video coming out in the next couple of days of how to play KC Cup, how to take care of yourself, how to do well. Uh, that's coming out. But, like, again, like, I, again, like, you have to be really alert to what the meta is, and I think this is it. Like, I don't see... Uh, we could also discuss this on stream tomorrow if you want to as well, which we can do, and see if you guys have any opinions. But this is where I think the meta is at the moment. But, like, you know, I, I just don't think... I think, like, some of the decks, like Rocket, Constell, or Live Twin, have just, you bell have fallen. Because, and even Earth Machine, because, like, I just don't think that they compete with the top tier, top of tier decks as well. Maybe I'm wrong because I haven't tested the Earth Machine matchup as much, but like in my head, it just doesn't feel great. Okay, so that's going to be our, our meta snapshot. If you enjoyed this, please like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, uh, and yeah, I'll see you tomorrow for the next uh, Max Time on Twitch. Bye, YouTube.